Well, howdy, folks. I think today I'll talk a little bit about knowledge and wisdom and how the two sometimes combine and sometimes they don't. An example of knowledge would be take this lighter, for instance. This lighter. In my knowledge of this lighter, I know this lighter is capable of having a flame. In my knowledge, I know that if you shake it and you, you hear there's something rattling around in there, there's a fluid, a combustible fluid in there. And if there's something to ignite that fluid, there's a flint and a little scraper. And that scraper gets a spark off the flint, creates a spark. And when you combine, by pushing down the lever here, the lever releases the gas, and it creates a spark from the flint, and guess what you got? You got a flame. I know that. That's knowledge. There's more to it. You can go in great depth about the fluid in there, about the, the flint, you know, about the structure of the flint, the material itself. You can, you can uh, know more about this than I know. You can know about the gas when it was discovered. When they first, you know, found out they could use it to create a flame. There's so much knowledge. And some people know more than others. Just like we today know more than they knew thousands of years ago. Wisdom is knowing not to stick my finger in the flame. Knowledge tells me if I stick my finger in the flame, I'm going to get burnt. But wisdom keeps me from doing it. Now, if you're trying to show wisdom to somebody, it's showing by example. I light the flame. Wisdom is you don't put your finger in the flame, you'll get burnt. How do you prove it? How do you prove wisdom? Sometimes you don't want to prove wisdom because you'll get hurt. You light the flame, you stick your finger in. If I hold my finger in the flame too long, I already know that I'm going to get burnt. Wisdom would be being able to show somebody without hurting yourself that, you know, you can get burnt. Example. So you can get burnt. Somebody says, You can get burnt by sticking your finger in a flame or, you know, on a hot stove? You say, yeah. Well, well I don't believe it. Well, I'm going to show you. I could stick my finger in the flame and then burn myself and show you the burn then you'd believe it. But was that wise of me to do that when I could have done this? This is like my finger. I stuck it in the flame for so long and look what happened. Yeah, yeah. You see? So wisdom is something that according to the knowledge behind that wisdom can and has been around for a long time. But there are levels of knowledge and levels of wisdom. If you don't know much about anything, you know about some things, you could still have wisdom. But the more we find out about, say, the elements, the weather, Our level of wisdom is, is directly applied to how much knowledge we have in the past through your knowledge of say the weather it's raining out it's cold out your knowledge from observation of people who've been out in the cold when it's raining and then got sick and you know that so there's a knowledge there 
Well, that's simple. It's been raining for a long time and it's been cold for a long time. These are simple examples of some knowledge that would have been available to people thousands of years ago. And the corresponding wisdom of, well, it's raining out and it's cold, so I'm going to stay inside. Well, that sounds pretty wise. That's a wise thing to do. Don't go out in the cold and the rain. And people had wisdom thousands of years ago. They also had stories that were examples of their wisdom. And as time went by, these stories were written down and shared so that examples of wisdom could be shared with other people that these people could learn from reading about displays of wisdom. Now, within wisdom itself is not knowledge that's necessarily totally complete knowledge of everything exactly the way it really is. Let's just say they're stories of wisdom and they're based on basic things that happened now there there'd be no uh, wisdom about say stepping outside of a spaceship if you're living in you know 3000 BC they had no knowledge of being in outer space they had no understanding of outer space. There's no oxygen out there. Now how can you have wisdom about something you don't know about? It's kind of hard, isn't it? Wisdom might tell you in simpler times, well, you don't involve yourself with things you don't know. <clears throat> that way, if there are repercussions, you won't be affected by them. That's fine if the repercussions would be bad, but what about if there's something you don't know about and you won't get involved with it, but it would have been beneficial? Now you have negative repercussions. So that display of a simplistic wisdom, which might seem like wisdom, it really didn't show much intelligence because they didn't they didn't have the knowledge and that goes through time there's there's a trade-off between wisdom and knowledge simple basic wisdom that's good wisdom that's usable wisdom that's beneficial existed for a long time and knowledge has been growing for a long time. Now what happens if knowledge was faulty about things in the past? Can you still extract wisdom from these stories that include inaccuracies? Sure. Do the stories themselves become totally garbage because of inaccuracies no not necessarily if there's something in the story or stories that can be gathered if you can get something from the stories that was good and help to teach you some wisdom then there was something good about that story but to treat a story that has inaccuracies as totally good. It's a good story. It's the truth because I want to believe it because I was told to believe it because I was told that if I didn't believe it, I wasn't a good person. These are issues that are just so unbeneficial to humanity today that it just it does not show wisdom. <laughs>